Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. In a world of lies and distortions, the truth must be told and lies and deceit must be confronted. In a world where lies are constant be- constantly being told, where history is being rewritten, silence is a crime. The truth must be told, and lies and deceit must be confronted. Today, I'm going to be interviewing a woman who has what we call chutzpah. In America, you would say chutzpah. (laughs) In Hebrew, chutzpah. And because of her straightforwardness because of her confronting the lies and being bold and not doing what or not staying silent in the face of this rewriting of history and this uh, culture culture cancel or cancel culture this woman has been banned from the social media you will not be able to see her post just like they're trying to ban the U.S. president, Donald Trump. When these people have control like this, how how can you be heard? Well, we're going to be interviewing today a very, very uh, bold woman, as I said. Her name is Laura Loomer. I I'm sure that you've seen her videos. She has gone to confront people like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, asking them questions straight out, challenging them on their lies, on their deceit, on their deceptions. You have to be very brave to do such a thing, especially when you're in their territory and you're a woman all alone. I'm in awe. My head just shakes when I think of Laura Loomer and how bold she is and what chutzpah she has. Amazing. She's running for Congress. I hope she gets elected. We'll be right back. Always challenging the status quo. Hello, I'm Rod Bryant on Beyond the Matrix here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I want to encourage you to listen each week, every Wednesday at the same time, for an amazing show that will challenge you, inform you, and inspire. News, views, and wisdom for the nations here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Don't forget, Beyond the Matrix every week, Wednesday, here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. must have seen her videos. She exposes the crimes and and, uh, indiscrepancies of the likes of Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and the rest of the so-called squad. Enter the fearless Laura Loomer. For those who don't know Laura Loomer, she's an American political activist and internet personality. She was a reporter for the Rebel Media in Canada, and today she is the, the Republican congressional candidate in Florida. She has the endorsements of veteran political consultant and former advisor to President Donald Trump, Roger Stone. She's outspoken, she's fearless, and has what we Israelis like to call chutzpah. She is the, uh, what the world needs today. She's outspoken, as I said. She's fearless in exposing the truth. And I want to welcome to the show, Laura Loomer. 
Thank you so much, Tamar. I really appreciate you having me on. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm concerned about you because you are really in the limelight right now. A lot of people don't just dislike you. They hate you because you are fearless, and that makes you dangerous to them. Right. And I know that you're running for Congress right now uh, in Florida. So uh, let me just start out with a very general question. And that is, what do you believe is the most pressing problem that America and the free world is facing today? Oh, uh, well, there's there's two right now. And the one that uh, inspired me to run for Congress that I believe is a threat to uh, not only our, our our country here in the United States, but also just to the Western world in general, is the attack on free speech and the massive uh, censorship campaign to silence truth seekers and to silence patriots um, across across the world. Uh, you know, without freedom of expression, you can't really communicate um uh, freely, of course. And without the First Amendment here in our country, uh, you know, we, we aren't we aren't America. What makes America great is the fact that we have a First Amendment right. And it's uh, a country that people uh, aspire to to move to and to to come to someday, because uh, in most parts of the world, and, and this is true, there is no First Amendment in any other country in the world. And there are people who are being imprisoned for their speech. They're are people who are being killed for their speech. There are people who are being beaten for their speech. There are people around the world um, who have suffered greatly for uh, speaking out about issues of human rights or speaking out about injustices. And they don't get to enjoy the First Amendment protections that we have. And uh, I find it to be really alarming because we're seeing human rights and civil rights violations being carried out, uh, you know, with the help of these big tech social media companies. And it's not only... Uh, jeopardizing people's people's liberties and their rights, but it's also uh, transforming the way elections are carried out around the world. Um, and you know, it can it relates to Israel because uh, you know not only is 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 it a civil rights issue and a human rights issue, but the censorship now has become a global public safety issue. And there was a perfect display of this um, the other day in Israel when they were. Uh, uh, I guess, interrogating one of the uh, Twitter executives. And they asked this Twitter executive why uh, it was um, considered hate speech or a bannable offense to uh, post in support of Israel. But the Ayatollahs um, in Iran are able to call for genocide against Israel. Right. And it's not it's not uh, considered a, a, a violation of the terms of service. Uh, we also saw another um, another uh, absurd uh, stance taken by these social media companies a few days ago when uh, Twitter decided that they were going to make the Star of David a hate symbol. And so this was another story where you had Jewish people who had the Star of David in their bios uh, getting banned and shut down for quote unquote hate speech because apparently Twitter thinks that uh, being a proud Jew or uh, displaying a sign of Judaism is a form of, of hate speech. But meanwhile, they allow for terrorist organizations to have access right uh here in the united states they're they're censoring and shutting down the president of the united states we're in the we're in the middle of a pandemic where people have not been able to uh gather for political events they haven't been able to campaign or attend presidential debates or presidential rallies and these companies now are trying to control the political discourse and help the democrats steal the election by uh, shutting down and censoring our own commander in chief. Right. Um, and so I believe that that is the, the greatest threat right now uh, facing the world. And if you look at coronavirus and how it relates, uh, you know, to this issue, the reason why nearly half of the world's population had to undergo some form of quarantine or lockdown due to COVID is because of censorship. You know, we wouldn't be in this situation right now uh, on this on this global scale of you know people losing their jobs and economies crashing and and people dying from from a virus if the Chinese had not censored the flow of information regarding this virus out of their country 
whistleblower doctors were being banned online because the Chinese Communist Party works hand in hand with the. They, they were also clients. disappearing. These doctors they who were, were talking. Killing, they were. They were. They were exactly. They were disappearing, and they were never to be seen again. So whether they died or whether they were murdered or whether they were imprisoned. You know, we know that the Chinese are actively putting people in concentration camps. So, you know, that was something that the Jews were obviously subjected to first. And we always said never again. Okay, Uh, Laura, I have to interrupt you because we have a caller, but I just want to follow up with what you said about them. Uh, Donald Trump, the the president of the United States, was saying that uh, the social media, Twitter, etc. is not I I forget the exact words you use, but something like they're not the arbitrators of truth. They're not the people who decide what the truth is. You know, when did they get that power. All right, let's go to a caller. I want to remind all of our listeners that if you have any comments or questions, you can call in. This is a live show, and uh, our numbers are on the top of our homepage at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Let's go to a caller. We have Francis calling in from the occupied territories of Ohio. (laughs) Hi there, Francis. Go ahead. Hi. Um, Yeah, I love people like uh, Milo, you, Laura Loomer. And Roger Stone, I watch them all the time because it's the best source of information I can get. Um, so I lived as a child. I lived overseas in Japan almost my entire life. And it's so important what the U.S. does in terms of free speech because whatever the U.S. does, Japan follows like 10 or 15 years afterwards. So uh, my question is, what do you plan on doing once you get into Congress? Are you planning to pass like antitrust laws or... What will you do? Mm, Good question. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a really good question. Well, there definitely needs to be, uh, you know, antitrust investigations and, uh, you know, I I hope that there's uh, antitrust legislation uh, because these companies now appear to have more power uh, than our own governments. Right. These big tech companies are now more powerful than the president himself shutting him down, silencing his speech, basically saying we are not going to give you access to your account to speak to uh, the world and communicate in the digital public square unless you say what we want you to say or you delete what we don't like what you say. Um, And this poses a huge threat. I mean, it's very tyrannical what these companies are doing. But ultimately, I think that before there's any proposals to pass new uh, laws or look at new legislation, we need to start enforcing laws on the book. Books. You mentioned in the beginning that I've been endorsed by Roger Stone. Well, Roger Stone was just recently granted clemency by President Trump and the Democrats were trying to, you know, cook up this wild Russian conspiracy hoax to throw him into prison uh, where they were hoping he would die. They were trying to send him to a COVID infested prison. Um, And, uh, you know, they said that his crime was apparently lying to Congress. Well, these big tech social media companies have also lied to Congress. Okay, they are guilty of committing perjury when they testified to Congress and they said that they do not censor conservatives, that they do not interfere in elections, that they are not silencing political speech, that they are not, you know, using algorithms to manipulate conservatives and suppress conservative speech. And I don't think that there should be two sets of laws in this country for regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or whether you are an average person or a, you know, a big tech billionaire in Silicon Valley. Nancy Pelosi constantly says nobody's above the law. So, you know, I think that we should start holding these companies accountable by jailing their executives for committing perjury. Wow. Um, It's a it's an offense punishable by time in prison. And we need to be upholding our laws equally. You don't get a pass to break the law and and commit treason and, uh, you know, be a traitor to your country and be a sellout to uh, the Saudis or be a sellout to the Chinese Communist Party. a party or Islamic dictatorships. Um, you don't get to do that. The free speech is not for sale. And if American companies are going to be participating in implementing human rights and civil rights and free speech violations, well, you know, they should be held accountable legally for doing so. And I do believe that these companies, if they're not going to abide by the Constitution, they should be taxed and they should be heavily fined. Okay, so Francis, thank you for your call. Uh, I I appreciate that. And so it's really difficult, Laura, because, you know, on one hand, we don't want the government deciding these things about free speech, you know, who can say what, because that's almost like the communists, like the Soviet Union. On the other hand, now we've got it with the 
the the companies themselves that are deciding. So it's it's got it's going to be very tricky how to be able to um, balance that out. But let me ask right. you about what's going on now with the left. Now we've seen that they could not get Trump out th- through the uh, elections, through Democratic elections. He was still elected. They couldn't get him out when they tried to frame him with uh, Russian collusion. They couldn't get him out through trying to impeach him. They and uh, they're trying so many things. When we get back, I'm going to ask you now about the violence. Now they're using physical violence to overrun America to try to get him out and using the coronavirus against him. I'm going to ask you about that when we get back from the break. Hello, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Did you know this psalm and many others were composed by a Jewish shepherd and musician who later became a king? Would you like to know some of the inner meanings of psalms to help you connect with God and strengthen your soul? An exciting and easy to read book is now available, which will help you do just that. Software for the Soul, Psalms for Everyone, available on Kindle, Audible, and Amazon.com. Software for the Soul. Modesty at the beach? It isn't just about body image. It's about feeling good. Modest swimsuits so we don't get burned by the sun. So we won't get ogled by strangers. So we'll feel free to express ourselves without the need to expose ourselves. Let Marcy Modest help you to cover up what you want, how you want. Made in Israel. Visit MarcyModest.com. That's M-A-R-S-E-A Modest.com. And get a 10% discount on your first purchase. Two new shows on Israel News Talk Radio. The return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel was prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago and is coming true today. Shalom. Join me, Josh Wander, on Israel Unplugged. Listen in as we delve into the spiritual and physical aspects of the Jewish return to Zion. We'll discuss the biblically mandated, historic, and of course practical understandings of this incredible transition from exile to redemption. That's Israel Unplugged, every Monday on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom! I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we're back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. And uh, we're speaking with Laura Loomer. She is running for Congress in Florida, and she's here uh, answering our questions. We're talking about everything that having to do with what's going on in the United States today regarding the left uh, coming up, the anarchists, the burning down the, the uh, of buildings, protests, doing everything that they can in order to try to uh, remove... Uh, U.S. President Donald Trump from the White House and uh, saying all that, Laura, you know, I was saying in the last segment that they're they, they couldn't do it by law. They couldn't do it by intimidation. And so now they're taking to the streets and literally burning down parts of America, making these autonomous zones, which is, you know, I, I just want to. I want you to give me about one minute here because I want to tell you what I think is going to happen in November. In November, after the elections, if if the left wins, if Biden wins, 
America is lost because it, it's it's just not going to be the same America we grew up with. We and and what America stood for. It's going to just turn socialist, communist, and and I and it it saddens me. If Donald Trump wins, I think it's also going to be bad in the sense that. The left is going to go crazy. They're not going to accept it. They're going to be screaming, not my president, not my president. They're going to be burning down America. We see already in places like Portland and Seattle where the feds were, were trying to go in there to make peace and to protect federal buildings, that the mayors, the governors, et cetera, were screaming, get out of our state. We didn't invite you here. We don't want you here. And right. if he wins in November, I can see a scenario where they say we do not recognize his win. He rigged the elections. He cheated, etc. We are not going to pay federal taxes and if they don't pay federal taxes, in essence, they have seceded from the union. And people who went to sleep at night in the United States of America, in California or Oregon or, or Washington or New York or Florida, etc., may wake up the next day in a new autonomous zone that is statewide. And they're not part of the union anymore because these, these places will not want to uh, be part of this federal government. And we've already seen roadblocks taking place in New York uh, under the guise of we have to know who's coming in because of corona. We have to tell all these out-of-towners. You know, you have to go to quarantine. I can see roadblocks being set up in these states that don't accept the election results if Donald Trump is reelected. I just see whoever wins a terrible thing taking place um, because the left is being extremely violent. So what, what do you see going on here with the left? Well, you're not you're not wrong about that. The the, the radical left realizes that uh, that uh, their their protests over the last four years have not changed the situation. Donald Trump is clearly still the president and he's very likely to go on to win uh, a re-election in November. Um, and so you're right. They're using violent tactics to try to intimidate people, to try to make people feel the same way that you just said. They want people to feel, well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But we cannot allow ourselves to be intimidated by these communists and these radicals and these domestic terrorists who want to silence Americans into submission. That's what communists do, you know, and communism has been the most lethal uh, ideology throughout the uh, throughout history, killing over 100 million people and counting. And uh, we can't allow for communists like Joe Biden and and uh, his supporters and, you know, other other communists uh, within the Democrat Party who are now in the halls of Congress uh, to to make Americans feel like they either have to uh, comply or be silenced or comply or be beaten in the streets by radical Antifa domestic terrorists who are being openly embraced by uh, by the Democrat Party. I mean, I haven't seen any Democrats condemn these violent attacks that are taking right. place. Um, so the opposite, concerning. they're defending them. They're saying that they're lying and saying that they're peaceful. They're, yeah. uh, they're, 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 they're saying they need a place to express themselves while they're burning down yeah, buildings. Yeah, well, they're fundraising for them. They're fundraising for them, right? So while, while they're keeping... Look, the synagogues have been... Synagogues and churches here in America have been shut down for over four months, Okay. Uh, So uh, you could effectively say that here in America, you know, not even even during the time of Hitler, you know, Jewish people were still able to have services. Okay, the the synagogues weren't even shut down this long under under Hitler. And so all around the world right now, you see synagogues, synagogues and churches are being shut down because people are being forced to quarantine. But meanwhile, the Democrats are telling people you can't go to church, you can't go to synagogue, you can't pray, you can't go to funerals. Okay, in New York City, they're literally locking Jews up. Uh, they're putting bolts. On, you've seen the videos of de Blasio putting gates up in Hasidic communities to try to prevent, uh, you know, Hasidic Jews from leaving. But meanwhile, he's allowing for his daughter and other Black Lives Matter and Antifa domestic terrorists to roam the streets because apparently, you know, the coronavirus Blasio, doesn't the, recognize. The cure, yeah, the cure for COVID is is protesting against President Trump and protesting against the police. Right. You know, but God forbid you go to church or synagogue. Um, these are godless people, right? That's what communists want. They want to break people down. They want to 
They want to demoralize them. They want to strip them of their faith. They want to f- strip them of their culture and they want anarchy and they want lawlessness. Right. You know, um, let me let me interrupt you here, because if people read the Black Lives Matter website, it says there that they are uh, against the nuclear family, that they they are against basically faith and family. And these are two things that the communists have always tried to destroy because uh, the state the state, the collective has to be the most important and powerful thing. And if a person has a, a religious faith or a person um, it has family values, those supersede the state, which makes it a danger. And that's why they have to destroy it. Laura, uh, right. during the break, I want to say very quickly, I'd like you to tell us, you were talking about it's not just censorship from the social media that's taking place today, but you were telling me that banks... Uh, are censoring people as well. Please tell our listeners about that. Yeah, so it's not just Twitter and Facebook, right? It's a very surface level conversation when people talk about censorship as it relates to the social media companies. Uh, The banks like Chase Bank, for example, they're banning conservatives. I was uh, temporarily shut down by Chase Bank for being a Trump supporter. Pay. PayPal has banned me and many other conservatives. Uh, The banks are banning people in the cryptocurrency community, uh, Venmo and GoFundMe, payment processors. You know, uh, banking institutions are shutting conservatives down. Um, And so, you know, people will say you made a comment like, oh, well, you know, it's a tricky situation because we don't want to tell companies, you know, what they can and can't do. But at the same time, you know, these are civil rights violations. People are being shut down from banks and they're being denied equal access. And for example, just today alone, you know, my campaign, uh, we were actually blocked or, or banned by Xfinity Comcast, which is one of the only Internet service providers here in the district. And they blocked me from sending uh, my campaign fundraising text messages and emails because they said it was dangerous content. Um, And so, you know, it's very dangerous territory when you start banning people, not just for their speech, but banning them from their banks, banning them from payment processors and then banning them from from Internet providers. So Uh, how do they do that? I mean, if you have a bank account with one of these banks and they and they they do what they did to you. I mean, how do you get your money out? How do you how do you survive? How do you pay? You know, well. You're, you know, it's a, it's a good question. And I remember the day, I'll never forget the day I was in New York City when Chase Bank shut down my online access and froze my account. And I was in a cab in New York City and I was on my way to go protest uh, censorship at, at Twitter in New York City. And uh, I went to pay for my cab and I couldn't because Chase shut down my debit cards. And then, uh, then I received a notification that said I had been suspended from using Chase Bank. And uh, several of my conservative friends who are also pro-Trump activists said that they got letters from Chase Bank saying that they had to withdraw their money in 30 days and they were going to be permanently banned. And I was able to get some news coverage about this and the New York Post reported on it. And then I guess Chase Bank, they decided to change their story and, you know, say, oh, no, we're not censoring people. We're not shutting people down. Uh, But if you look at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, right, the the CEO of of J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, he's given over a million dollars to radical leftist organizations like the Southern Poverty Law Center to combat uh, President Trump and, uh, you know, President Trump supporters under false accusations of hate and racism. Right. Um, And so uh, it's very dangerous what's happening here. And a lot of people are just totally unaware of it. Um, But uh, look, what's happening to me and happening to some of these other conservatives is what's going to happen on a larger scale to all conservatives. We see what these companies are doing and you know, Has they're, there they're... ever been a time that you that you kind of considered maybe you're going to stop because you just can't take it? You're one woman with all of these big, powerful places against you. Have you ever broken at any time or or just been too scared to to continue? It's so easy to shut people down today with with, uh, you know, all of the technology that we have today. Right. I mean, look, I'm a human. I, I get emotional. I have emotions. And, and there's days where I felt like quitting and, you know, thought about throwing the towel in. But, you know, I've been I feel like I have a purpose and I've been placed on this planet to fight a battle that I've clearly been given enough strength to fight. And there's a lot of people who are depending on me to fight this fight and people are being silenced. And we need people who are going to rise up and 
you know, there's countless stories um, throughout biblical history. If you look at stories like, you know, David and Goliath, for example, where one person, it takes one person, one per, one person can accomplish great things. One person can really change the world. And I really do believe in the power of one voice and the power of one individual. And so when people say, oh, you're just one woman, you can't accomplish anything you know, I would disagree. And mm-hmm. I'm running for Congress now to, to, to prove and make that very point. Let, let me ask you a real Jewish question. What, what, what do your parents say <laughs> when, when they see you doing this and, and the danger you put yourself in? Well, you know, uh, my parents are supportive of what I do. I think at first they weren't, they were, you know, a little shocked and, uh, afraid for you. And they tried to tell me that, uh, this wouldn't be good for my future. And, you know, I I think that over time they've, they've grown accustomed to seeing what I do, and I know that they are, are supportive now. All right. I, you, I you know what? Hold it right there. We have to go to another break. I'm really sorry. We're going to be right back, and if you want to call in, you have to do so now. We'll be right back. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel, Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. We're speaking with Laura Loomer. She's running for Congress in Florida. If you are in Florida, I urge you to uh, vote for her. She is a voice, uh, a fearless voice, what is direly needed today, not just in the United States, but all over the world, because truth is being suppressed and history is being rewritten, and it is a... uh, terrible uh, thing that we're seeing today with people being silenced and, and the truth being um, overwritten. So, uh, Laura, in the last uh, segment, I was asking what your parents thought uh, of you know their darling little daughter uh, putting herself in such danger and saying that uh, you were telling me oh, in, during the break that you have received death threats. To tell us very briefly about that. Yeah, look, I've received death threats. A lot of the work that I've done has been exposing anti-Semitism and Islamic terrorist activity here in the U.S. So I've been targeted by groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, which is essentially Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood. I've received death threats from, you know, jihadists and people who, you know, have called for acts of jihad against me. So, you know, I get death threats from Antifa, uh, these same radicals that, you know, are trying to take over our streets. So, uh, it's something that comes along with uh, taking a stand and being in the public eye. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to stop just because people are, are making threats against me. And we have to have people who who fight back and take a stand. And uh, we're not going to have a country much longer. And uh, we're not going to be able to enjoy our freedoms if we allow for the left to just use violence and thre- threaten scare tactics to get what they want. It's not American. You know, we need to restore law and order. And that's one of the most important 
things in our country that we need to do this election cycle, along with taking down these big tech companies and protecting free speech is we need to restore law and order to the streets of America. All right. And so uh, we were talking very briefly before about the Trump Biden race and what could happen in November. What do you see uh, happening there? Well, look, uh, I'm voting for President Trump. I believe that President Trump's going to going to win. I think that there's a lot of Democrats, especially moderate Democrats, who are disillusioned and really concerned over the fact that the Democrats have decided to run a candidate with full blown dementia. Uh, It's not realistic. Joe Biden can't even get a coherent sentence out. And then you have progressives who are radical communists who don't even support Joe Biden and they wanted somebody more radical like Bernie Sanders. So there's a divided Democrat Party and there's a lot of probably moderate Democrats who are terrified of the idea of defunding the police. And, you know, if a Democrat gets elected to the White House, you know, what are we what are we going to do? We're not going to have any more law and order, no more police. We're going to have absolute anarchy. You can't have a, a society, a country with no police. So uh, people realize that. And there's a lot of Democrats who are still capable of, you know, rationalizing with that concept and saying, you know, maybe I'll just if they, you know, a lot they don't like President Trump, but they are going to bite the bullet and and vote for him anyway, because they know that uh, if, like you said, if a Democrat gets into office, America is over Uh, with President Trump. There's hope that we'll have law and order and that our American values will be preserved, which is why I've always been a Trump supporter and why. I'm going to vote for him. And I've met Democrats who have said that very thing to me. They say, oh, well, you know, I'm not too fond of him, but uh, I'm going to be voting for him anyway because I just can't vote for full-blown communists and and lawlessness. Yeah, you know, Um, I I know people in America who have told me that uh, they voted for Obama, they voted for Hillary, and they are today secret Trump supporters. They cannot exactly. tell their friends uh, that they're going to be voting for Trump. It's very interesting. All right. Yeah. And uh, how do you see all this affecting the Jews in America today? Well, look, it's 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 creating a lot of chaos and, and violence uh, within the Jewish community. Hate crimes against Jews have risen substantially, according to the FBI statistics. We have jihadists in Congress who are supporting BDS and calling for the eradication of Israel. Uh, you know, there's a lot of anti-Israel sentiment. The Democrats don't even support Israel anymore. You have the Palestinian Hamas funded media thanking members of the Democrat Party this week, including my own Democrat opponent, Lois Frankel, uh, for uh, writing a letter condemning Israel for annexing parts of Judea and Samaria. I mean, these the, it's what President Trump said. The Democrat Party is the party of Jew haters and Israel haters. And I don't understand why any Demo- why any Jew would ever vote Democrat. You know, so I I like to say that with my election, it's going to be the first time in U.S. history where a Republican Jewish woman goes up against a Democrat Jewish woman. So we're putting the Jews on trial here in District 21, Florida, and they're going to have a choice this November to vote for a candidate who supports their survival and, you know, their preservation. That's me. Or to, to vote for a candidate who supports a party that is endorsing BLM, which has an anti-Zionist, anti-Israel message, and a group that thinks it's okay to have people like like uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib in Congress calling for, you know, dehumanization of Jews and palling around with Louis Farrakhan, who thinks that Hitler was a great man. I mean, that's that's the America that that's the America you're going to have if, if if Joe Biden becomes president. You know, look look forward to a future Speaker of the House, Ilhan Omar. You know, yeah, and uh, you know, I I don't even think it's going to be Biden as president, but whoever his VP is, that's who's going to be president. Because as you said, right, he's exactly. uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, and he hasn't even. I mean, it's absurd. We don't even know who his VP nominee for the last month. They've been saying every week now, oh, this is the week. This is the week he's going to tell us. And uh, it's just such a bizarre election. And cycle. the fact that it has to be like a black woman is racist. You know, you want to get the best person for the job, whether they're male or female, whether whatever skin color they are, we don't care. But uh, just they have to be this. That that's already racist. I it's. But you know, people are so blind with hatred today that you know, there there's there's such useful idiots. To, you know, I, I I don't even know what to say there. It's just a it's a very sad situation. All right, in in the five minutes that we have left, Laura, um, what do you want to talk about? What's your most important message to everybody? Well, I I just I know that you have a very uh, diverse audience, people listening all over the country, all over the world. But I want to let people know that. Um, If you are a United States citizen, it doesn't matter where you live as long as you are a citizen. Um, You can donate to my campaign. You can support my campaign. And this really is going to be a grassroots effort of, you know, American patriots, uh, 
you know, supporting a candidate who they believe in. And so I would encourage people to support my campaign, to donate to my campaign. And if you have friends and family in Florida and Palm Beach County, please tell them to vote for me um, and get other people to rally around my race, because uh, I really do believe that uh, uh, my candidacy uh, is much larger than just a congressional campaign. It represents a movement and it's a movement of people who have been silenced and it's a movement of people who um, are, are fighting back against uh, being silenced and being shut down. W- and, what is uh, your website? Really give, give our listeners your website. People can go to Laura Loomer for Congress.com. It's Laura Loomer for Congress.com. And that's where you can sign up for my emails or text messages or um, also uh, you can make a donation. And I'm not on social media because they banned me everywhere, but I do have Parler. Um, so Parler is a new site. Um, which I would encourage people to go on. It's a new um, uh, pro free speech site. I'm also on Gab, and you could just find me there under Laura Loomer. I've never heard of Gab. So it's what, gab.com? Yeah, G A B.com, gab.com, and then there's also Parler, P A R L E R, uh, Parler with an E.com. So that's where a lot of conservatives are going now because Twitter and Facebook just keep shutting them down. They're banning everybody. Right. I've heard of Parler, but I've not heard of Gab.com. Okay, so good. I learned something mm-hmm. new, too. All right. And so um, you want people to, to donate to your campaign. What are you going to do if uh, you lose? Well, I'm, I'm determined to win. You know, I believe in manifesting your own destiny. And so when I talk about my race, I talk about when I win, not if I win. And I, I really do believe in the, the power of uh, positive energy and positive thinking and manifesting your own destiny, even if it sounds corny. And uh, for me, winning is the only option. And so since the day I filed to run for Congress, that's what I've been focused on doing. And that's what I plan to do. I plan to win. I plan to win. Okay. And can you, can you share with us, I'm just, you know, I, I want to encourage other people to be to be more brave and more bold like you. And if you can do it, then other people can do it. So share with us some of your tips on, you know, how to not be afraid to speak out and to say when, when you see lies being told, when you see rewriting of history, when you see uh, uh, people who are just scream and yell and curse at you when they can't win an argument, what's the best way to try to convince people that, you know, to see the light? Well, in order to have purpose in your life, you have to have things that you believe in and people that things that you're willing to fight for and things that you're willing to make sacrifices for. And you should know that when you take a stand or you speak up or you do something that um, that is brave or courageous or you 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 advocate for a cause that you're you're speaking for people who uh, may not uh, have that same voice or may not have that right all over the world. Right. And um, so I also think that people need to just be confident in who they are and not necessarily care about, you know, optics or what people may think, because if you're doing the right thing and you're you're for the people and you're helping the people and you're a truth seeker, uh, the truth always prevails. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of unjust things that happen. There's a lot of unjust things that have happened to me, of course, through this whole ordeal. And they continue to happen. But I do believe that that um, that justice always prevails. You know, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, it might not be a year from now, but someday it will. You just keep on fighting. All right. Well, I want to uh, wish you the best of luck that you should uh, be able to help uh, maintain the wonderful values that America was founded, that the United States of America was founded upon, and that it needs fighters like you, it needs people who are not afraid and that are brave like you because it is so easy to be uh, silenced today. It is so easy to be silenced today. And this, this silence is what helps the evil grow and prosper and take over. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Laura Loomer. Good luck on your congressional campaign. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on. All right. And again, people can go to Laura Loomer for Congress.com and help support her. Or just check out her website and share it with others. Thank you for being with us.
Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.home page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel, plus little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 